this days looks like everyone is using XUnit. So I have five advanced features to show you that likely you don't know them. Let's go. The first feature is the iAsync Lifetime Interface. This one is extremely useful. If you watch my recent video about XUnit lifecycle, you already know it. But what it is iAsync Lifetime? XUnit uses constructors and destructors to set up and tear down operations. However, it's common that in your setup or in the teardown, you need to work with IO operations. So you need a synchronous code. And doing that on a constructor and on a destructor is not a good idea. So what you can use instead is to implement the iAsync lifetime interface. By doing that, you will gain access to a method that is the initialize a sync and also to a dispose a sync. And you can use them as setup and tear down. The cool thing is that this interface can be implemented in your test class, but also in your test fixture, like the case that I'm doing right here. So if you have a kind of an integration test where you need to set up a database and then you need to tear down by the end that data, you can take advantage of this feature. On this example that I have right here, I'm reading data from a CS file that I will use to set up my system under test. So when I run this test, it will run this initialize a sync and then we'll proceed to my tests. So take a look into your integration tests and check if you have a synchronous code in your constructors or in your dispose. If so, go ahead and implement the iAsync lifetime. The second feature is the before after test attribute. This feature lets you create an attribute for your tests that will allow you to run code before and after each test. So you may use it for something as simple as this, to log some data into a console. Or for example, something like this, where I'm defining an attribute that every test with this attribute, I will make sure that it will be executed in a given culture. On this case, on the before, I'm setting the current culture to an invariant culture, and by the end, I'm rolling back the culture. And how do we use this type of attributes? It's as simple as this. In your test, you will just go here and define the name of the attribute that you are looking for. So on this example that I'm showing you, since my computer is on the Portuguese region, is using the Portuguese format for a decimal. But when I apply the invariant culture, I can use the dot instead of a comma as a decimal separator. The third feature is custom outputs. What does this mean? What if in the test result, instead of that common and standard message by X unit, I wanted to see something from my own. I can do that. To do that, you just need to get the iTest output helper, and then you write to there as if you were writing to a console. So if I run this test, you will see everything that I written to the test output helper in the result. The fourth feature is customizing the display name of your tests. This one, I really like it. And it's highly correlated with the test naming convention that you pick. By the way, I have another video that I talk about the most common test naming conventions in the .NET space, and I will link that video in the description. In tests like this that I have here, what XUnit does by default is writing exactly the name of the method in the result window. You can see it right here. So you will see that name with the underscores in this case on test result window, on your console, on log files in your CI CD, all those things. But when you go with a convention like this one, where an underscore in fact means a space, because we are trying to write in plain English, wouldn't it be cool if you could replace that underscore with a white space? Yes, you can. And it's quite simple to do it. You just need to have an xunit.runner.json file in the root of your project. And there you will add the method display options. And there's an option that is replace underscore with space. Now when we execute the tests again, you can see now that I don't have the underscores anymore, but we can go one step further. There's many other options on this method display options that you can use, and you can find them in the documentation. But there's one that I really like this year. And let's see what this does. This test right here is checking that 10 is greater than 5. With that option, when we run that test, instead of seeing the GT that stands by greater than, we see the greater than operator. So the same works for equal, lower than, all those kind of things. The feature number five is test order. This one is really interesting. If you want to define a specific order of execution of your tests, you can do it with XUnit. And you do that by implementing the iTestCase orderer. This one that we are seeing here, I got it from the samples from XUnit. And you can find another example there for, for example, if you want to go with alphabetic ordering, but you can implement your own. On this case, I'm using a test priority. So I'll give priorities to different tests 
and that will define the order of execution. I'm doing a thread slip on each one so you can see the order of execution. So let's run the tests. You see here the zero starting, then move to the five, so priority number five, and then to priority number 10. So the order of execution will always be this one. And you can find a few examples of test order in the XUnit samples, but also I have these samples that I just showed you available for patrons. Now I would love to hear from you. Did you know all of those features there's any of them that you didn't know and now you will start using it, I would love to hear from you. And if there's any other advanced feature that most don't know and you'd like to see me exploring, please leave a comment. And once you have done that, I think you should watch this video right here.